Hello there, a very warm welcome to the EU Observer's brand new talk show, Let's Talk About EU. The round table discussion will bring us face to face with members of the European Parliament on a monthly basis to discuss contentious topics around the table. Joining me here today to discuss the topic of body scanning technology is Mr. Sahid Al Quadraoui, the Belgian member of the European Parliament representing the group of the Progressive Alliance of Socialists and Democrats, Judith Sargentini, Dutch member of the European Parliament representing the Green Group. Mr. Simon Busuttel, Maltese member of the European Parliament representing the European People's Party, and Baroness Sarah Ludford, British member of the European Parliament representing the group of the Alliance of Liberal Democrats for Europe. You're all very welcome. I'm delighted to have you here, joining me here in the studio. So without further ado, let's talk about EU. In the words of the American journalist Philip Rucker, beleaguered airline passengers, already shoeless, beltless and waterless, will now be holding their legs apart, raising their arms and effectively bearing all. And that's before being allowed to fly. So firstly, I would like to ask my guests if they've ever been through a body scanner before and how it was for them. Mm -hmm. Baroness, would you like to start? No, I haven't yet. Uh, it may well be that if I fly to the States next week, uh, I might do because I might go from London, uh, depending on other... Uh, decisions. Uh, but as I always come by train to Brussels and now also to Strasbourg, I haven't flown either to Brussels or France uh, yet from, from the UK. So I have so far escaped body scanners at, uh, at British airports. Why would you feel embarrassed? I've been through a body scanner. Oh, you've been through? Yes. Tell me about that. Uh, at Amsterdam Airport. Mm -hmm. Schiphol. Uh, Schiphol. Mm -hmm. I was not embarrassed. That, but that's because at the Air, Schiphol Airport they have a new uh, form of body scanners without a photo. You see a stick puppet which could which is similar for a male or a female and it lights up if, if you for instance forgot your keys in your pocket here it lights up yellow and they frisk you only at that place and it doesn't have data uh, uh, collection and it's actually quite nice better than frisking but um, the question is, to me, not so much whether whether we uh, they can adapt the technology in such a way that we don't feel um, we don't feel intrused, uh, intruded in our in our in our integrity, uh, but it's about what kind of a world do we want to live in, and does it really help protecting safety? And that is questionable because of that. The, the Nigerian that flew from Schiphol to Detroit. Um, he could have been caught if if uh, in uh, if um, if investigations were better. One and next time he might swallow his uh, his uh, his uh, his packages, and then then you can't find it on a body scanner. But the way it's done at Heathrow now, I think it's a shame. It's an old-fashioned method, and they don't give you the opportunity to abstain from it. Indeed, a frisking, because I find the freedom of choice there very important. Mm -hmm. But. I don't think it's useful to stick to a debate on the technology, as I've seen at Amsterdam Airport, that we can have proper technology, which leaves us to one big question. Does it help safety? And, and the second question, do we want this everywhere in Europe all the time? That is the question. Do we want this? And will we be seeing an EU legislation on body scanners sometime in the future? Mr. Busuttle, what do you think? Well, I haven't, been, I haven't been through one yet. No? But I think we need to be open-minded on this issue. We should not start with a no or a yes, mm -hmm. but we should allow the experts to tell us, to provide us with evidence, ideally scientific evidence, that this would actually lead to better uh, security for, the, for, for, for citizens. Uh, if that is not proved, then we should not go for it. Exactly. I, I, uh, I very much make my own the words of Vivian Redding, the new commissioner responsible uh, mm -hmm. for data protection, amongst other things, uh, when she said we should not be driven by fear. And she went on to say, but by our values on this issue. So will these body scanners be technologically proven to be of benefit from a security point of view? Will they harm us from a health point of view? Will they be too inefficient to operate at airports? Will they require us to go to the airport three or four hours before? All these questions need to be answered before we have this knee-jerk reaction and go for body scanners all over Europe. 
all these questions should be uh, uh, in line for a reply now in, 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 uh, in studies that are being uh, undertaken by the Commission and which should be ready by April. I mean, body scanners are popping up all over Europe and well, we haven't even made a decision. If I, I mean, uh, I fully agree that we need European regulation because it's, it's stupid from a security point of view to allow member states now to uh, to organize this uh, introduction of body scanners in a, in a unilateral way. Um, and uh, because, uh, because it's not good for security and because we need um, a good regulation and specify what kind of measures should be taken to, um, to, to, ad to address issues like privacy and health. And this should be done at European level. And as, as has been said, um, we are waiting for the, for the report they will come out in April with a view, maybe, of uh, having a proposal for regulation by summer, which we have to discuss together with the Commission and the Member States. And uh, I also fully agree that uh, we need to, to be clear that uh, this body scanner is just a, a technique. It's an instrument that might help to... Uh, uh, to, to raise security levels, but it, it, it will not obtain 100 security. Uh, that's what you said also. Yeah, we have to decide, it will, is it, it will, worth it? Well, and, it and it's also very, very, uh, it costs also a lot of money. Exactly. Yeah? It's okay. very expensive. And we don't have the money, do we? Exactly. Exactly. Can, there's, the there's demands that we have. And, and I've heard you phrase it. It's uh, privacy, it's the body integrity, making sure that data are not collected uh, uh, and... Uh, um, and, um, and, and health issues, very important. But I think um, that these can be overcome. And that shouldn't be the end of our debate, because that's what worries me. We can spend another three weeks waiting, or three months waiting. I visited myself, I wanted to see. I didn't want to wait uh, until, uh, until uh, the uh, Commission comes up with information. And I see that all the technical demands I had can be met. But which leads me to the bigger question, if it is also perfect and if it's actually client friendly because it goes quicker than frisking. So coming three hours in front, no, I'd say the other way around. It saves you time on your flight to the US. So if there's all kinds of benefits, then it leaves us with a very dangerous question. What happens if they put this in front of the local library and if they put this here at the national parliament? Yeah. Is that the society that we want? And that's and the point that I think we should focus on and not lose ourselves in a technical debate well, because mm -hmm. before we know it, somebody has put them in front of the library. Yeah, and don't let's forget that what President Obama said after the Detroit attempted uh, bomb on Christmas Day, he said that there was a failure to connect the dots. So I think exactly. we, we must never lose sight with, with any technological sort of quick fix uh, of the, I mean, it keeps coming out uh, time and time again. It did after 9-11, and 9-11 commission in the US, which said there were about 18 agencies which had different bits of information they put, didn't put together, uh, the jigsaw. Um, so, and President Obama said that this time, uh, I mean, the guy, the Detroit would-be bomber, was on a no-fly list. Exactly. There is a danger that if you just rely on technological fixes, you're actually not going to do the hard work of making sure that, there, that targeted information is truly shared in an appropriate manner and that intelligence leads are followed up. And you end up relying on, if you like, mass surveillance and you lose sight of the wood for the trees. And it's but the thing is that um, now they come with a body scanner, but next time, when indeed somebody will, will just uh, put it in, inside the body, a uh, kind of bomb or explosives, uh, they should have come, uh, they, they, they will inside come with... Inside their body parts. Yeah, they will come with some other uh, te technology and then again we will have the same debate. It's a race, uh, isn't it? It's a race between it's, it's us and the terrorists. Yes, yes. And, 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 and if we don't, if we don't compete in that race, then we've lost it. And yes, you're right. Uh, they will come up with something new, and so must we come up with but new technology to all the time. Back and really take take a, a, an overall view yeah. of where we're going and how much data we do need to collect. And indeed, I raised that with the new Commissioner Malmstrom in the mm -hmm. in the hearing uh, in January, and she gave a commitment that she is going to do a review of all the different schemes and projects we have for collecting data, and really take a hard look.